Let me kind of explain how to use this grid and how to deviate from it. So on your standard pose, like your front facing standard pose, your top part um, is one head. So you have your head. And then your neck usually falls kind of right in the middle of the of the next division. Um, so down here, this is where the pectoralis muscles are going to be like just below here. And your rib cage is going to fall somewhere down here, bottom of your rib cage. The pubic bone is right at the middle. And then um, the knee hits the bottom quarter and then the foot hits this bottom line. So this is based on an eight head um, division, but I've divided it basically up into four sections with the top section divided for the head. So it just gives you some like something more to anchor on. Um, I find that anything more than that gets super complex and, and slows you down a lot. Um, around here, basically like a half head division or maybe a little bit less. That's going to be uh, where your pelvis is. Um, on a lot of people, you know, shoulders and pelvis will have something to do with each other. They may not be like um, exactly uh, the same width. And so that's a proportional alignment to pay attention to the tailor to each individual is to think about how wide the shoulders are compared to the, to the pelvis. Um, it should be a little more than a head wide. So um, that's just something to build on. Um, when you go down the center line, if, if you have a clothed uh, figure, that's great. Um, because that gives you like the center line in, uh, in the middle. Um, here, the reference I'm using is split weight. So he actually has um, uh, the weight and balance evenly distributed on both feet. And, you know, that doesn't happen like um, a huge amount, but it does happen. So you'll just want to uh, be prepared for that. Um, and here the, the feet are kind of more or less straight out. So I like to make a mark kind of where the bottom of the foot is and where like the toe is separate so I can kind of build this this platform for the foot to stand on. The rib cage will start just above the neck, right? And you can use, um, you can kind of box it out, square it off. I like this kind of anatomical approach to it um, where you um, use a little bit of the, of the anatomy that you know about the bone structure. You can kind of create this like arch. Um, that helps a little bit. I find that sometimes you'll need to do like the arch for the pubic bone, almost like you have a superhero wearing underwear. Um, but um, that'll allow you to like bend the legs and allow you to insert the legs. Um, and so when you get down to the knee, um, depending on the this kind of depends on the person and the sort of proportional set you're using, but the um, patella is going to kind of go somewhere in relation to this division. And so you're going to fi finish the figure out kind of like that. And I like to put um, sort of these cross contour lines before and after every joint just to kind of make things um, make sense for me. And I can use the fabric to kind of help me create shoes and stuff like that. Now, for the, um, we haven't built out the shoulders. The simplest way to do it is basically just to literally just draw the clavicles out to the shoulders. Um, you can use straight or curved lines, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then from there you can hang the arms down. Um, so the elbow is going to line up with the bottom of the rib cage right here. And then the forearm is going to come down and the hand is going to end somewhere along the middle of the thigh, right? Um, right at the Charlie horse point, right? When you get a Charlie horse, that's where the hands are. Um, so that's your basic proportions. You know, the head proportions we, we've gone over in a different video, eyes right in the center and so on. Um, and you can use different ways to, to tilt that and everything. Um, 
Now the clothes kind of will hide some of the proportions, but um, you can then build clothing on top of this um, pretty readily.